Nina, how surreal does it feel to you to be sitting down to talk about this particular experience? I am a native New Yorker, uh, you know, lived through 9-11, various other, you know, uh, untoward events since then, but um, I don't, certainly never dreamed that I would be sitting in a studio room at NBC uh, discussing this kind of assault. New Yorkers really perceived what happened to you as a pretty brutal attack. In fact, when we reported on it, we paused the videotape because it was so disturbing to watch. How have you processed what happened to you? Unfortunately, I remember basically the entire thing from start to finish. Um, never saw my attacker, but I remember, you know, starting to go down the subway steps um, and feeling this blow to my head, which I initially thought was a baseball bat. I kept yelling, stop, 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 which of course was, uh, you know, uh, fine, but completely and utterly useless. And um, then I'm not sure when he finished assaulting me whether, uh, I think he grabbed my, he did grab my bag, but then I started calling help, 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 help. And fortunately, um, two NYPD officers who were, I think, on the lower platform uh, down by the trains came up. You feel like they were there pretty quickly? Very quickly, very quickly. Um, having their, them there down there on the platform and responding to my my call for help was just nothing short of miraculous. The police officers called for the ambulance um, right away, and I asked the ambulance uh, crew if I could please be taken to Weill Cornell Medical Center because that is where my internist is. And I remember feeling the um, mask uh, descend on my nose uh, prior to the surgery and feeling a big sense of relief because that was, you know, the beginning of what I would eventually be a reconstitution process. Was this a normal Thursday night for you? Did you usually work late? I do not generally work that late. At the end of the evening, I put on my coat and uh, headed downstairs and, you know, had no anticipation that anything untoward would ever happen. Would you ride the subway home often? All, um, all the time. I ride the subway um, basically seven days per week, and um, I've taken it at later hours. Do you remember thinking in the moment, you know, is this, am, am I being robbed? Am, am I being, what, what was going through your head? I mean, in, in retrospect, I think, like, why did he need to hit me over the head with a hammer up to 14 times when he could simply have asked me for my bag or showed me the hammer and said, if you don't, give me your bag, I'm going to hit you with this. Did you have a view about the spike in crime that New York is going through right now and all the discussion around it? The situation right now is really quite frightening. I feel like every day somebody is telling me about another assault. Does it change your behavior going forward? What will you be doing differently now? Well, short term, I do not plan to take the subway. Um, my colleagues at the health department uh, with extraordinary generosity started a GoFundMe page um, and uh, people have contributed to it at just the most incredibly uh, generous, generous contributions and um, I will certainly use that um, for Uber rides, to and from work when I return to the office. Uh, is it because right now you're feeling a little unsteady on your feet or is it because you're also feeling fearful of the subway right now? You're exactly correct. It is both. Um, I mean, I am a little unsteady on my feet right now, you know, um, thanks to the fabulous PT and OT, I can walk, um, but I do feel somewhat shaky and I am definitely concerned about re-entering the subway system. Did your attacker say anything to you? I don't believe he said a word. I did not hear him say anything. I never saw him. Um, I saw the video. There were two videos of the assault. Um, those were shown to me by the assistant district attorney. What was your reaction when you sat and looked at the videotape? Actually, funny enough, I don't think I really had a strong reaction. It was kind of, it, it reminded me of exactly what had happened, but I, I basically remember every moment of the attack. So seeing it um, caught on video did not uh, shake me up in any way. Is there something in particular that triggers you at the moment? At one moment in the hospital, I um, was having a dream in which somebody was hitting me in the right front temple with a hammer. Sounds like a nightmare. And recently, um, I, I, I was crossing the street the day after I was discharged from the hospital, and I noticed some gentleman sort of stop short of the curb. So he sort of stopped in the street short of the curb, and I felt like, why is he doing that? 
is something about to happen. Is there anything you want to say to the mayor, the governor, about the situation on the subway and or what you'd like to see done? Personally, I'm not uh, thrilled with the bail reform laws that went into effect that allowed people out um, uh, onto the streets if they were not accused of a uh, particularly violent crime. Uh, you know, they're allowed out until the date of their trial. I would love to see that policy undone um, and um, people, you know, kept incarcerated until the date of the trial. The law should be applied equally to everybody, um, and nobody should be able to have a special ticket out of the system because they're wealthy or white or well-connected or anything like that. If you are accused of a violent crime, whatever your race, your ethnicity, et cetera, um, I would like to see you incarcerated until the date of your trial. What do you say to your fellow New Yorkers about the state of the city right now? Many New Yorkers are packing up and, and leaving. I think it's, it's, it's very sad, but it's also completely understandable. Um, and I can only hope that this wave of, of horror will come to an end. So am I understanding you correctly that not only are you a dedicated public servant who has helped uh, us through this COVID pandemic, but you were also working late without overtime on the night that this happened to you? I love working. Um, you know, I love the rhythm. I love the feeling that I'm doing something useful. Um, that's one of the things I love about public health. Um, it's, you know, it, it's not sort of uh, abstract, esoteric, you know, uh, spinning theories and so on. It's, you know, it's, it's about real solutions for real problems. I ran one of the city's um, vaccine pods or points of dispensing out in the Rockaways for two and a half months. I loved running that pod. Um, um, and I had fabulous pod mates. Um, I was working on a lit review on uh, vaccine hesitancy, and I love doing that. You know, I love like hopping on. I, I don't mean to make it sound like, oh, wow, there's a pandemic. Now <laughs> I have all these extra projects, but I love immersing myself in, you know, something larger than I am and doing what I can to be useful and helpful. So suffice it to say, you're looking forward to going back to work? I have set myself tentatively the date of May 1st. You're obviously, I mean, so lucky to be so sharp. It's amazing. Um, but you said there were some moments where you worried that you might not be. If I were to go into work five days per week, um, you know, day after day, eight hour day, um, it might um, be somewhat challenging. Thank you so much for letting us share your story. It's been really inspiring. Well, thank you so much for reaching out and interviewing me. And um, uh, it's you know, been for me, I've never had this kind of opportunity before. To I say, wish you didn't have the opportunity, but when the physical and occupational therapists were asking me, what are your goals? I said, well, I want my life back, you know, um, and thanks to everybody's help, I am taking my life back.